we have a uh, open mic night coming up on um, the 4th of September. Um, it's fun time. Can I tell you? It's your chance to entertain us if you'd like, either in prayer, testimony, singing, dancing, a poem, whatever. It's a great night, and we all get to take part if we want. Uh, <clears throat> that's again on June 30th. Um, something near and dear to my heart, which I've told people before, I want to fill this church up, and in an effort to continue to grow, have what we call a BSS Sunday. That's a bring someone Sunday. If you bring someone, we'd be very appreciative. That's going to take place on Sunday the 21st. Um, bring someone Sunday. What can I tell you? Come on down. We have a food pantry with Brother Brian. If you need food, you can see him. If you want to donate some food, you can see him. We have Bible study on Wednesday nights with Pastor Sean. We do Gospel of Matthew. And we're in the end times part of that. A lot of discussion going on. They're lively and fun. Come on down again. <coughs> I mean, after services, the first two things take place here. One is we have an altar call up here with Pastor. And in the back room or in the back area, we have a social gathering for fellowship if you are interested. Pastor still has a morning radio show on Saturdays, WDER 1320 AM and 92.1 FM. Uh, he still has a YouTube following and it continues to grow, but still the more the merrier. So to join, go online to Sean Theodore, C-A-F-T-H-E-O-D-O-R-E. Click on subscribe and you'll be part of that. Also has a Facebook following. If you happen to follow us on Facebook, we would like you to hit the share button so everybody can take part in Pastor Sean's intellectual studies and teachings. Um, we don't have a collection here. We have a donation box there on the wall. <coughs> Pardon me. And every little bit helps us to continue to grow, serve the Lord, this church, and others. If you're watching out there in computer land, you can also give by going to Abundant Grace NH.com and clicking on the donation bar. Uh, we are grateful for all donations. If you are unable to give monetarily, you can always give a service to the church or the church people, or you can always keep us in your prayers. All this is gratefully accepted, and we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, without further ado, we give this microphone over to the man who knows how to use it, Pastor <laughs> Sean. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you do pretty well yourself, brother. God bless you. Amen. Amen. That was good. We're going to do communion after, so if you want to partake in the communion, it's a great time. We do it once a month. And uh, it says as often as you do this, do it in uh, remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so, before we let the kids go, I didn't realize I have so many things I'm doing. I have uh, two YouTube messages per week, so we do the Tuesday devotional and we do the Friday devotional. So, this week I did End Times, did one on the Antichrist, and I did one on the, did the Day of the Lord, and then we do the Wednesday Bible study, we do all kinds of stuff there on Wednesday at 7, and then we do the, um, the Sunday service, which we're doing today, so that's four, and then I have Saturday on one on the radio with a message there. So I guess I have five messages a week. I didn't even realize that. I'm like, wow, five a week? So, yeah, we're preaching a lot. We're preaching the word. So it's, it's a blessing. So we praise God to be able to get the word of God out as much as possible. We praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's share. And we know we're in some perilous, dangerous, you know, times. And we, we want to keep ourselves safe. So I want to give an announcement to you all and everybody who's here. This is very important that we all know this is the Lord is keeping us all safe because the Lord will keep us safe. And that's awesome. But I do feel like I, I need to bring this up because we know that we hear about all the news and all the shootings and all the crazy people everywhere. So, so we do want to bring something up. And, uh, God bless you, brother, as you come in. 
We have some security now in our church. We don't want to be a soft zone, just like uh, all churches pretty much do. We're smaller. We're not like a big church. We can hire security guards to stand out in front or anything like that. But we have uh, people who are trained, like people who are very skilled and trained. And, and to, we have two people here that are trained, so they, they're they like our security. They carry, they're just for our safety. And it's nothing more. We don't believe anything will ever happen because God will protect us. Amen? Amen? But it's great to be safe. Amen? So we're secure. So if some crazy walks through the door, he's not going to be going too far. <laughs> because we're secure. Amen. We praise God for that. We're a secure church. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will drop him first, but if, if it, for some reason he breaks through the Holy Spirit somehow, some way, then, then God will uh, deal with it with uh, experts who know what they're doing. They've been the people we have that we allow to do the safety are those who've been through safety courses and they're extremely well trained and well schooled. They have to. That's the prerequisite of. And discipline and, and smart, and they've been taking the safety course. That's a requirement. So you have to at least have that and skill and knowledge, obviously, a, a clean background and all that stuff. So that's very important. And anyone going forward with the background checks, if you do security down the road, we have to do that going forward because you have to. So we'll, we have these requirements as we go. But to the people who are here, we know that nothing will ever happen, but say, Hypothetically, something crazy would happen. We don't believe it ever will, but I've seen in, in, in the churches in Texas and things that we've watched. The most important thing if someone gets comes through the door is the most important thing for us to do is not jump up and run around and get down and let the security take care of it. You, know, you don't want to run up and ah, then you know you don't want to do that. And because then it takes away from the people. The security it has to be more careful and. If you just get down, it will be fine. So that's basically, I figured I'd give you that a little bit. That's the quick thing to do. You just get down, and God will take care of the rest, and it will be over really quick. We pray that that never happens to us. We talk to the dairy police on advice on what we need to do, because we don't worse, we, we were soft zone. We were soft. We had no, somebody could just walk in here. We didn't have any, but now we're feeling like we need to, just to be safe. You know, we, I, my job is to protect all of you. That's my number one goal as, as the shepherd and the pastor of the church. I'll do whatever I gotta do to protect you guys because I love you all and I'm here to do that. And so you can come in freely and worship God because his spirit is here, his protection is here, and he's gonna protect all of us through the Holy Spirit. We know that. But we gotta use our heads too, and be smart, knowing what the times we're in today. We're in some crazy times with a lot of crazy people out there. So you just never know. We just hope they come in and get saved because that's what we believe. The Holy Spirit will save them, but just in case, you know, we trust the Lord. God is good. We have all our bases covered because we want to be a, a good church to do these things. So God bless you. And those who are watching, you say, well, what's going on? You can come right on in. You can worship God. You can be saved. And you'll be praising the Lord. And His Spirit will bless you because His presence is here. And we just praise God. But most churches have security now. I'd say even the, I talked to the people in the local police. I said most churches today are pretty much secure highly secure so so now we're on the list of secure churches as well so we praise and we praise god for that that's great <laughs> and, uh, we want to protect this the people that are here so we just praise god so uh without further ado we're going to uh dismiss the children to the smaller children's church today we have a bunch of kids out but we want to go back we have sunday school today it's going to be a, a great study and uh you know, be blessed, the ones that are back there. So we just praise the Lord for them. Amen. We're in part two of our series, by the way, and it's uh, the fruit of the Spirit. Do we want to talk about the fruit of the Spirit? Amen. And we'll get started, and uh, we just pray that the Lord bless us. And uh, music is powerful today, and the presence of God is here. And we praise the Lord. We'll get started and see if this is applicable to anybody. <laughs> Hopefully it is, but I pray, I believe God has a word for you all today. So we're just praying that he sends his spirit and gives you a word. So we start. Lord, Father, thank you for the powerful worship. And your presence is already here. We are uplifted by your presence. I pray, Lord, for those who are in this building, that you would speak to each and every one of them, that you would fill them with your, your spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. I pray those who are watching online would be encouraged as well. I pray, Lord, this message would touch the hearts of those who hear it. We love you and we praise you. 
I must be Christian, you must increase the Lord. Help me to speak as the oracles of God, not of man. Thank you, praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 When you get saved and you become born again, do you know what that means? You are empowered by the Holy Spirit. He's living on the inside of you. How do you get saved? You repent of your sins. You accept Christ into your heart. You receive the Holy Spirit. And then you are regenerated. You are born again. And with that baptism of the Holy Spirit comes nine characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. We should be bringing forth fruit. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Therefore, you shall know them by their fruit. So what fruit do we need to have? What fruit needs to be popping out? We don't need to be fruit loops, but we need to be <laughs> we need to be fruity Christians, right? <laughs> All right, we got a fruity Christian over there. I think he's lost his mind. But a lot of people think we are when we're Christians. They think we're fruit cakes <laughs> for Jesus. But uh, the nine characteristics is love, which we covered last week, the first message, joy, peace. Long suffering, that's patience, gentleness, goodness is six, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That's nine. Temperance is self control. Meekness is humility. So I've given you all nine. You're like, good, I'm glad you remembered all nine. What if I went to nine? What's eight? What's seven? Oops. <laughs> oh, look at my Bible. <laughs> no, but those are the nine characteristics. And I'm going to do the second one today. The second one is joy. You know, this world doesn't have enough joy. There's no joy in the world like it used to be. You know, everywhere you go, I've been noticing this, that people are just miserable. They're panicking, they're stressed, they're frustrated, they're hostile towards one another. It's just, it's anxiety. It's like me, I got to be getting things first. You know, people cut in front of everybody. It's always, that's how it is today. It's like, People don't have that joy anymore. But I'm here to tell you, as Christians, we need to enjoy the journey. I want to focus on the Christ, not the Antichrist. I want to focus on Jesus over everything else. You know, I want to know about the end times, know about the Antichrist, know about what's coming. But I still want to know more about the Christ. And I want to look up to him because he says, look unto me, because your redemption draweth not. So we're going to focus on Jesus and what he's going to do. He's an awesome God. Instead of panicking about everything that's going on, I see a lot of Christians, they get into prophecy, and then prophecy is good to know, but they get so captivated by it that they get frustrated, stressed, oh no, what's going on, what's going to hit the earth, and they're, oh, this is happening, this prophetic thing, the war, the rumors of wars, and it says, be not troubled, Jesus said. He said, we're not supposed to be anxious about it, but we're supposed to enjoy the journey. Do you know, we need to enjoy the journey now. Once Jesus comes, I'll be happy. We need to be happy now, amen? The Bible says, that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Do you know what it says that? Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You know what happiness brings? A joy. It's like a medicine. It's like a medicine you take. A lot of people go to the doctor because they're stressed out. They're, they got trepidation, frustration. I don't think I'm rhyming here. But anyway, they go into the doctors and they have all these problems. Why? Because they're stressed out. And they're frustrated and angry. And that's not healthy. A merry heart with good like a medicine. There was this article about this woman. And she's, you know, over 100 years old. She's literally 114 years old. And she's still alive. And I read an article. They said, how did she live so long? How did she get such longevity? What, what was the secret to her health? Well, she said, well, you know, I do my exercise. Check. It's a good one, right? And she says, well, I... Um, eat right, my fruits and my vegetables and my ice cream occasionally. You know? <laughs> but good stuff most of the time. And she said, I eat right, eat healthy, exercise, which people do, and that's okay. But that was her evaluation of why she lived so long. But everybody that knew her said, you know what, the reason why we think she's living so long? She's the happiest person I've ever met. Every day she's smiling, every day she's happy, every day she's joyful, every day she's just rejoicing in the Lord. And you know, because of that, longevity. You know, when you're happy, it works like a medicine. So this lady is still getting around at 114, moving around. Isn't that amazing? So you really want to live a long life? I know people, they're so stressed about everything. I'm stressed out about what I eat. So they're kind of fighting against their own... <laughs> 
They're fighting against themselves. I'm on a little farm life. I'm stressed. I don't know to eat this. I better eat that. You know, they're all stressed out. That's not good. Or they're going to exercise. I'm going to run the treadmill and I'm going to run it at wide open so I can get healthy. You know, they get extreme. How about balance it out? Eat a healthy diet once in a while, cheat a little bit, enjoy it, you know, enjoy the food, enjoy the blessing. You know, then go and exercise, enjoy it. You can get extreme here and there, but enjoy it. And then you know what? Be happy. You know what? People are you know what circumstantial Christians are happy when everything's going well, and when there's a destruction, they're not happy anymore. I want to get into the scriptures and tell you you need to be happy now. If you you know how many people they're waiting, if I get my breakthrough, then I'll be happy. They have a child when they're a baby. Once they start walking, then I'll be happy when they start walking. Once they, you know, start talking, I'll be happy. Once they get to school, then I'll be happy. Once they graduate high school, then I'll be happy. Once, they're always waiting for the next thing to make them happy. Then when they get there, they're still waiting for the next thing. Can you just be happy now with what you've got? When I get my new home, I'll be happy. When I get my new car, I'll be happy. When I get my new job, I'll be happy. When I get my breakthrough, I'll be happy. The Bible says, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Can somebody praise him and say, today is the day. I'm going to praise him because I am here. I'm healthy. I'm alive. And God is providing for you. I'm going to go to the book of Habakkuk. 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 How do you say it? Habakkuk. Habakkuk. No. Just kidding. I mean, it's jokes for this one. But Habakkuk. I think that's how it's said until I go to Israel and say Habakkuk. Say, no, no, no. You don't speak right. It's a Habakkuk. <laughs> I'll say, oops. But anyway, let's go to Habakkuk. I'm in a jokey type mood today. And we want to have some joy, right? We need to laugh a little bit. I tell a joke and someone's like, <laughs> Stop the jokes, they're annoying. <laughs> right? But we need to smile a little bit. Right? God wants us happy. You know, I believe Jesus has a sense of humor. He wants us to be joyful. The title of the message is Joy in the Journey. How many people want to have joy in their journey? You say, I lost my job. How can I have joy? You know what? I, I lost my job. And there was somebody they'd been watching me as a Christian. I just I lost my job. And it was bad, too. I got fired. You know why I got fired? He said, oh, you must have did something really bad. I was a Christian, and I had gospel tracks, and I was a Christian, and I did a great job. I was, they said, you're just not a good fit here. No, I'm a Christian, and that's not a good fit. And that was their excuse. I said, did I meet all my expectations? Yeah. Did you do everything you asked me? Yeah. Then why am I not a good fit? Because they knew I was a believer in Christ. We're going to let you go because you're a Christian. So I gave the gospel to him and the HR person when I left. I said, there you go. There's a salvation message for you. God bless you. Hope to see you in heaven someday. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then I left, and I was rejoicing. And someone was like, how are you so happy with all these problems? You lost your job. How are you going to pay your bills? And You're sitting there smiling and praising and happy. I said, why? Because God's got a better job. And he gave me a better job. And I made more money. The people appreciated me and they, they liked me and I was a Christian and they respected my faith. So you see God has a plan for your life. When something bad happened, you got fired. I did. Fired. You're fired. I'm oh, good. Thanks for the day off. I might go and have a fun with Jesus today. I'm going to have a good time. What are we going to do? I got this whole day off to celebrate. Celebrate my day off, Lord. So how do you do that? Because I know that I work for Jesus. My life is for him. I'm not going to get so stressed out. Bad things happen, and yeah, it hits you. It is okay to feel the pain of it at first, but then you got to move on from it. I want to read Habakkuk chapter 3. He was a powerful prophet. He was not only he was a minor prophet, but he prophesied about all kinds of things, the purpose of God. Um, he prophesied about even the end times, Habakkuk. There's things in here. But I want to read Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17. What does he say? He says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. What? 
The fig tree's not blossoming. That means I ain't getting no fruit off the tree right now. It's like it's a famine going on, an economic famine. My bank account isn't really doing too well. I'm barely getting by, barely scraping by. Has anyone ever been in that barely get by thing? You're just in this rut and it just keeps going. He says, it's not blossoming. Neither shall there be fruit in the vines. That vine, I can't get the wine and the juice out of these vines. And the, yield, and the, and the field shall yield no meat. He can't grow any vegetation or any kind of anything in the ground to be able to have, you know, the vegetation they need. The flock shall cut, be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. I'm not going to have any animals to be able to uh, flock. No sheep, no cows, nothing. I can't produce milk. I can't produce meat. I can't. I don't have much. He says, and then, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Shouldn't he be angry? God, why are you giving me barely enough? God, why is there barely anything in my refrigerator? God, why am I suffering and barely being able to pay these bills? Lord, I'm sick of this. I'm tired of barely getting by. No, Habakkuk didn't say that, did he? He says, all of these things are happening in my life. And you know what? You know what he's saying? I'm rejoicing in what I do have. I'm rejoicing that I'm alive. I'm rejoicing that I am saved. I am rejoicing, I'm rejoicing that God has given me eternal life. I'm rejoicing that something good is coming out of this. I'm rejoicing that my God is providing all my needs. I'm rejoicing in the desert. I'm going to have joy in the midst of my trouble. Can someone say amen today? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, joy doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you get a devastating trial. And you're like, oh, this is so wonderful. Oh, I'm just, you know, it's not that, you know. Some you lost a loved one. Oh, or you, you know, you got a bad doctor's report. Oh, this is so wonderful. No, that's not the joy it's talking about. Joy, you can have be happy, but joy means that you're content and you're satisfied with what God is allowing in your life. Even if you don't like it, even if you don't feel good, even if you don't understand it, you're still rejoicing in the Lord. Even though something's taking a lot longer than you expect it to take, you've prayed and you've waited. How many people have waited a long time for things and you've been waiting on God and things haven't changed? And sometimes it gets so bad that you see no end to this. You ever been in an endless road to destruction you feel like? You've wasted your time. you put so much energy. you put so much prayer. you put so much hope. you put so much effort. You've done everything you could. And it's led you down a road that you feel like, oh, my Lord, what have I been doing? Why have I been doing this? Where are you, Lord? No. God is there. God is there. And we need to say, Lord, even if the fig tree is not blossoming right now, even though the fruit is not bringing anything out in the vine, even though there's no flock in the stalls, I'm going to rejoice in my God. I'm going to rejoice in him because God is going to do something. God is going to start bringing some figs. God's going to start bringing some vegetation. God's going to start bringing a double portion of blessing because if I can praise him in the little, he's going to bless me in much because God will do double, triple, hundred thousand times more than you could ever ask if you have a heart of gratitude. Start thanking him for everything you have and then God will give you more. Can you praise him today and thank him and say, Lord, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask you. Think. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to have joy in the day of trouble. You know how you're a mature, mature Christian? I just messed that up. I was trying to say mature and joy at the same time. I went mature. Mature. How many people are mature? I'm a mature Christian. I'm mature in the Lord. What did I mess that one up? Brian's laughing over there. He'd do it too, brother. <laughs> Say mature and joy. Mature. I'm a mature Christian. It's a new word for today. Pastor Sean's word of the day, mature. So if you're looking at it on YouTube and you want to hear some crazy things, You'll say, wow, this guy's really immature. But anyway, let's rejoice and have joy in the day of trouble. Why? Look what he says in verse 19, Habakkuk. He says, the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hind's feet. 
You know what hinds feet? It's a female deer. And he says he's your strength. You know when you're going through trouble, he's your strength. He, he wants to build up your faith. He wants to carry you through your storm. He wants to build you up. He wants to mature you. He wants to develop you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to make you his own. And he wants to do something special in your life. He is your strength. And hinds feet. As a female deer, what do they do? They climb rocky terrains. They're sure-footed and confident. Do you know deer, they get into these rocky terrains? He's going to make your feet like hinds feet. So what happens when you hit some rocky terrain, when trouble comes, when trials come, when, you, when your best friend turns their back on you, when you lose your job, when something financially goes on, or when you're dealing with depression, or you're dealing with negativity, or you're dealing with setbacks, you're dealing with all kinds of things. The bottom's dropping out. You know what? You're going to be like a female deer, like hinds feet. You're going to climb over these rocks, and you're going to keep going and say, I may have been hit. I may have been knocked down. I may have had trouble. But you know what? Just like Habakkuk, I'm going to be like this female deer, and he's going to make my feet like hinds feet, and I'm going to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on the string, on my stringed instruments as I'm praising God, and I'm playing the stringed instruments, and I'm glorifying God in my trial. God is going to open up something big on your behalf, and you're going to have so much joy, not only in the valley, but you're going to get joy in the promised land. Even though we're wondering where our promised land is, we are going to be like deer, like female deer. We're going to come up over those rocks, and when the devil throws a rock, we are going to knock that rock down. Every fiery dart, we're going to knock it down, because Jesus is our rock. He's our fortress. He's our shield. He's He's our helper, a very present help in trouble. Can we praise God? He is with you today. We're going to be sure-footed and confident. The deer is not going, can I climb this rock? Maybe I'll make it. No. Every time a trial comes, you're going to be confident and bold. You're going to be able to rebuke the lies of the devil every time. And he's going to bless you. So you want joy in the day of trouble. We're going to have joy in the journey. Now I want to go to the next passage of Scripture. And uh, I'm going to read Psalm chapter 30 and verse 5. Psalm 30 and verse 5. And you know what? If you get into his presence, he's going to do mighty, mighty things in your life. We need more of Jesus. We need more of his presence. Now, he wants you to have fun. He wants you to do the things you enjoy to do in life, too. He wants you to have fun, whatever you like to do. I like sports. That's what I do. I like playing basketball. I like playing football. I like doing all kinds of things, sport, sports activities, whatever it may be. You know, I like doing it. And uh, whatever you enjoy to do, he wants you to have fun and enjoy your life. He loves you. He created all these things for you to enjoy. But he wants you to praise him and enjoy it and have joy in the journey. And that's what God is looking for. Now look what it says. Psalm 30, verse 5. It says, For his anger endureth but a moment. So his anger is for a moment. You know when God brings down a discipline, if we're doing something, he, he doesn't hold his anger against us. He's not holding anger. He loves us. You know, his anger is, I mean, he's, he's angry at the wicked every day, the scripture says. But us, he loves us. We can go astray for a long time. Eventually, he's going to get to the point where He's going to spank us a little bit which, because he likes, he loves us. And look what it says. In his favor is life. In his favor is life. God's anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. Do you know what that means? If you're saved, you're under grace. You know what that is? Unmerited favor. It is for a lifetime. God just doesn't give you grace for a day or two or a month or six months or a year. He gives you a lifetime of grace. That's what this scripture is saying right there. He's giving you grace every day. When you get up out of bed, you've got grace. Can we praise God? Your sins are forgiven. He has blessed you. He's made you righteous. He has cleansed you by his blood. And he says his anger is but for a moment, but his his blood, his favor is life forever until you get to heaven. Then you have more favor because you're going to be blessed for all eternity. If you're a believer, you've got it made. You've got it made, brothers and sisters. Because on this earth, you've got favor, and then when you pass, you've got eternal favor. 
for blessings for all eternity. We praise God. You're going to get favor in everything you do. God is going to open up doors. We got to stop praying, praising him. But I'm getting to the next part of this verse that's very powerful. It says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night. I don't know how long your night season is. How many people have cried over their trials? How many people have had some weeping, some pain? And you've been going through it as sorrow, that heartache, that pain, that setback, that disappointment. The Bible says weeping may endure for a night. Night doesn't last forever. The morning is coming. I said the morning is coming. Can we praise the Lord and say morning is coming. Joy is coming in the morning. The joy, that means he's going to answer your prayer. Now, so we should be having, even through the weeping, we should find a way to smile and say, Lord, I'm in pain. Lord, I'm suffering. Lord, I'm, I'm depressed. I'm struggling. But you know what? I'm going to start rejoicing in my God today. Can we start praising him and say, I'm going to start praising my Jesus, even when it hurts, even when it's hard, even when it's painful. Joy is coming in the morning. This is what makes us happy. Having faith, believing that God is going to end this trial because the Bible says, for surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off. You know what the scriptures say? He that, he that keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. He that keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. Isn't that a powerful scripture? If you keep the fig tree, you're going to eat the fruit thereof. And he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. Powerful. So that means if you keep the fig tree, you wait on God, and you keep his word, and you keep going, and you keep holding on to his promises, you're going to eat the fruit of that fig tree. Eventually, it's going to blossom. So right now, while it's not blossoming, and you're going through your storm, you need to say, Jesus, you are my joy. You are my peace. You are my power. You are my everything. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Not may, not could, but shall be added unto you. Let's seek first God in his kingdom and he's going to bless you. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. When you're delighting, that means you got joy. When you're delighting, it means you're happy. And when you're delighting, you're praising. And even when you hit rock bottom. Somebody needs to look up and say, Jesus, you are my everything. I am believing you in spite of my trials. Amen. Hallelujah. We can may endure for night with joy. The joy is coming in the morning. It says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 10. I believe it's verse 8 or 9. It says the joy of the Lord is my strength. You need strength to get joy. Let's go to the book of James. You want to talk joy? I like talking joy. Because without joy, we have nothing. You know, people are looking for happiness and looking for something. People in this world, you know, when you give someone a smile, you know, people tell me all the time, you're always so, so happy. They see it. I don't even realize I'm joyful. I don't even know I am. People say, my neighbors, they say, oh, well, you're always smiling. You're always happy. And I'm like, I am. They can see it because I, I have such peace and contentment with Jesus that I don't even need to smile for them to know that I'm happy. They can just tell. Because Jesus is everything. When well, he's everything, people are going to look at you and they're going to say, you know what? What is this about this person? I need to find out. <laughs> I, I, I don't have this peace, this joy. What's making them joyful? It's the Holy Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. This is the second part of the Spirit, uh, uh, the, the fruit of the Spirit message in its joy in the journey. What does it say in James 1 verse 2? A very familiar passage of Scripture. It says, my brethren, it's talking about you. It's talking about you. Talk about you, all of you. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. We're supposed to be joyful in divers. You know what divers means? Various, different, many trials. Has anybody been hit with more than one trial? <laughs> you get hit with bunches of them? You know one of the hardest ones? You get hit with a physical trial? It's hard to smile when you're in pain. It's hard to smile when you're going through. But you know what? You need to smile in your trial. Amen? Amen? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. That word count means to reckon, to conclude that God's got a plan. Why am I supposed to be joyful when everything's going wrong? It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. 
The reason why is he's trying to build patience in you. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works. What? Patience. And what does it say? But let patience have her perfect work. Can you let God do it, do the work in you? That you may, you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. God's trying to do a work in you, but if you get impatient and angry and you complain and you get frustrated with the Lord and you get agitated, what happens? And you, you're not letting God perform that perfect work in you. He wants to give you the blessing. He wants to settle your case. He wants to give you victory. He wants to open up the doors. He wants to give you his very best blessing that you could ever even imagine or dream of. But what he's doing is he's trying to develop you first so that when you step in, you're ready to receive what he has. But God sees all your character flaws. And if you don't think you're ready, he's still going to delay it until you're ready. Can someone say amen? He's we're a work in progress. If you want to do big things from the Lord, you need to be developed. You know, we have a, I say this a lot. We have a million dollar dream and we expect a penny's worth of problems, but that's not how it works. If you've got a big dream, you're going to go through some big stuff. And you've got to be willing to surrender to the trial that God is trying to develop you with. He's going to do something. The season is coming, but don't delay the season by fighting against it. Let him do the work and count it all joy and say, God's going to do something. So I'm rejoicing. Something bad happens. It's hard to rejoice, isn't it? You know, I, I had so many things happen, and I was trying. I said, I'm going to have a good day no matter what. I started getting bad news everywhere. People calling me here, saying, this is bad. I said, you know what? I said, I'm just going to, I'm not, not going to think of that. I said, I'm going to have, have a good day today anyway. I'm not going to let that steal my joy. Another thing came. I said, you know what? Put that behind me too. If I have to deal with it, I will. But you know what? I'm putting it behind me. I'm not letting it take away my joy. I'm going to count it all joy. The devil is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Bible says in John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and life more abundant. How many people want life more abundant? Then you need to let him put you through the fire like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They went through the fire. What makes you so special that you're not going to go through? If those godly people went through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of the patriarchs went through the fire, but you don't expect to go through the fire to get the blessing. Job lost everything. And he prays the Lord and says, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Turn to your neighbor and say, change is coming. We praise God, change is coming. Let me get to the next verse. I'm trying to get through these. So we need to count it all joy. So one, when we're waiting on God, we need to be thankful for what we have, whether we have something or not. Whether it's this littlest thing, we need to thank the Lord for whatever it is that you have. Praise Him for it. It's a blessing. We sometimes take for granted the things that are so special. God wants you to be thankful because a lot of people don't have a lot of things. You have a lot more than a lot of people have. We need to be thankful for what we have instead of not angry for the things we don't have. The devil wants to magnify what you don't have instead of being happy for what you do have. God is working in you something. He wants the will and the do of his good pleasure. For God worketh in you both the will and the do of his good pleasure. Praise God. Now I want to go to 1 Peter because it says something very similar. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. It says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice. What? I greatly rejoice. Though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. That's many trials. I rejoice that I'm in manifold. That's many trials and tribulations. It says, I greatly rejoice. Why do you greatly rejoice? Here's the reason. Verse 7. This is what God's trying to do in you first. Get with the program. Jump on board. Get with the program. You know what I'm talking about? How many people want to get with this? A lot, of, a lot of people don't like this, but this is what God is trying to do. This is important. If he's going to use you, verse 7 is the key. Why are we rejoicing that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found on a praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, 
the appearing of Jesus Christ, it says the trial of your faith is more precious than gold. The trial of your faith is more precious than any kind of monetary, tangible thing that you can get on this earth. God wants your faith to be so strong. He's trying it by fire. And you know what fire does? It hurts. It purifies. It cleanses. We don't like it. But God is trying you to make you strong so that when he does pour out the a big blessing in your life. You are going to be strong in faith and you are going to be used like a warrior, like a David, like a Samson, like a, a Joshua, like one of the powerful Israelites, Caleb. You're going to be a powerful Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, Daniel, warrior for Jesus. You're going to be a David taking down your Goliath. Can somebody say, I got joy. I got joy in the Lord. It is my strength and nothing the devil can do is going to take it away. He's under my feet. He has no joy. He has misery. All he can do is tantalize us because he's got no joy because he's angry because you're saying he can't take it away. He's going to hell for all eternity, but you are going to be with Jesus for all eternity. Can somebody praise him and say, thank you, Lord. I have joy. The devil doesn't. He can't smile because he's destroyed. He's a defeated foe. God is trying to purify Will you let him? Will you let him? We want to be somewhere. We want to be good husbands. But we need to go through the fire and let God build with us up. We want to be good wives. We need to go through the fire and let God purify us. If you're single, God's trying to build you up. That's a time for you to let the Lord purify you first. Then you'll be that, you'll God will send that spouse that you can be a blessing to. But if you're not purified, then he sends the spouse, then you're going to destroy the blessing. It's like with anything. You don't give a child a car at six years old and say, it's okay, I love you, you want that car, go drive it, we love you, go ahead, take a spin, God loves you, I love you, I want you happy. And when you hit a tree, there's not so much happiness anymore with a six-year-old driving off into the woods somewhere, crashing. That's the same with us. We need to be ready for the car. We need to be ready to drive it. We need to be more mature. We need to be tried like fire so that when we come out, we are ready. We're humble. We are compassionate. I'm blowing up this mic this morning. We are compassionate. Someone said hallelujah. I like that. Hallelujah. You guys hearing what I'm saying today? I hope so. What does the same verse say? It says, whom having not seen. You haven't seen God. Has anyone seen God like physically? No one's seen it, right? It says, whom you have not seen, you love. You love him, but you haven't seen him. You love God, you can't see him, right? But you still love him. Yeah. And it says, in whom though ye, though now ye see him not, yet believing. How many people believe that God's going to answer your prayer? How many people believe that God is working? How many people believe that God's going to deliver you? How many people are waiting and believing for the big, big, big reward that's coming your, your, your way? It says, in believing, ye, re, you, ye re, rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Because you believe. You want to have joy in the journey? Because I believe. You know, Romans 13, or Romans 15, 13 says we have joy and peace in believing. You know how you have joy? You believe. If you're not believing, you have no joy. You're angry. Why am I angry? I don't believe. Why am, I, why am I depressed? Because I don't believe. Why am I down? Unless you have a chemical issue, you're dealing with a demonic issue or whatever with your mind and the devil's attacking you. But why don't I believe? Because we can get depressed and we have to fight that. But joy comes when we believe. The more you believe, the more joy that comes your way. The more you believe, the more Holy Spirit comes your way. You know what? Heaven is attracted to belief. He says, when I come, when, he says, when I got to find faith, Luke 8, well, I find faith when I return on the earth. He's looking for some faith. He's looking for someone to believe. They've been praying for 20 years and they're still believing. God's like, wow. He's looking for someone to say, I've been through the valley 13 years. I'm still believing. I've been going through the struggle. I'm still believing. God's preparing. God's training. God's building. God's ready to do something. Can somebody say amen? God is going to do something for you. We've got to be excited again. Get your joy back. Get your fire back. It's like I'd say, Lord, I'm sorry that I've been doubting. Sorry I've been depressed. Sorry I've been down. I want my joy back. 
God wants you to get your fire back and get all riled up again and say, I'm going to believe my God. I'm going to get excited. The Holy Spirit's about ready to do something. Amen? Because the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, believing, meekness, temperance. God wants to see those characteristics flowing in you. Then he'll give you the blessing. He doesn't want us to have the fruit of the Spirit is anger, hostility, depression, frustration, fear, jealousy, rage. That's not the fruit of the Spirit. That's the fruit of the flesh. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. We need His power. And quickly, I'm going to close with this. Hope you guys are receiving this today. You guys, have you guys receiving this word? Psalm 16 and verse 11. I love this verse. You guys want joy? God's all ready to do something. Let's be joyful. If you're down, go in the presence of God. There's a, sometimes I'm sitting around and I'm starting to feel down. I don't know. I'm saying, I'm down. So why am I feeling down? Because I'm a pretty happy person, like almost all the time. Once in a while, occasionally, I'll say, God's like, let's go. I want you to pray for me. It's all right. It's all right. I got nothing better to do right now. Let's go pray. So I go out, I go in my secret place, I start praying, and I just feel so happy. I go back, I am feeling like a new man. I feel changed. I feel changed by this joy. I feel such happiness and such reassurance and such power and love and hope. I, I can't even explain it. I'm so joyful after I go into his presence. And why? Let's read Psalm 1611. Thou wilt show me the path of life. How many people believe that? He's going to show you his path. You're going to know who to marry. You're going to know what job to take. You're going to know how to battle a court case. You're going to know how to deal with the ministry. You're going to know how to deal with the dream that you've been work, work, uh, concerned with. You're going to, he's going to show you his path. Then it says, in thy presence is fullness of joy. What is the title of the message? Joy in the journey. In his presence is fullness of joy. So believe to be thankful for the things you have. And what else does it say? And in his presence, start praising him. It says, at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You know, you all were singing today. I felt his presence, and I started seeing smiles on your faces. You know what? This church is singing. I put the mic out, you guys. I didn't even need to be the lead singer. Maybe I'll jump on drums and let you guys sing out there. Because I think you guys are doing a great job, by the way. You guys are singing up a storm out here today. You guys did a great job, by the way. You guys are really praising him. You know what happens when you're singing and you're praising his presence comes. And all of a sudden, you shackles start falling off. The devil don't want you singing. He doesn't want you praising. He doesn't want you to do anything. He wants to keep your praises shut down. But when you stop praising, the devil gets scared. When you stop praising, he begins to get worried. Because at, in his presence, is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. The Bible says in in, in Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We need to try to do it as much as possible. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord, in his power, in his presence, his fullness of joy at thy right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. We want pleasure. You want power. We want him. We need to rejoice. And what does it say in this last verse? I'm going to close. It says this. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names in my lips. You just see what that says? Their sorrows are multiplied that hasten after another God. A lot of people make their dream their God. They want a breakthrough because that's their God. God is not God. It's their breakthrough that's their God. They want the blessing, not the blesser. And that's an idol. And you get sorrowful. Or if we have a hobby that becomes more important than God, or we have something in our lives that's more important than God, our sorrows become multiplied. Because you know what? No God can bring you joy. There's no false God. It says their sorrows are multiplied and hasten after idolatry, things they put in front of God. They put their spouse in front of God. They put their children in front of God. They put their car in front of God. They put their job in front of God. They put their dream in front of God. They put their hobbies in front of God. They put the secular world in front of God. 
But and his sorrows have multiplied. But you know what? My sorrows are gone because my joy is going to be filled. And I'm going to joy in the journey because my joy is going to be filled because I'm going to hasten after the Jehovah God. Can we praise him? I'm hastening after the Lord, not after this world, not after these things. God is more important than anything else. And when God sees that he is first, then he's going to give you his reward. Can someone praise God this morning? Amen. I never like to close without giving the opportunity to receive Jesus. We should have joy today. If you haven't received Christ, you know what? When you get saved, you're going to have such joy. It doesn't mean your problems are going to go. It doesn't mean you're not going to have sorrowful moments. It doesn't mean you're not going to weep from time to time. It doesn't mean you're not going to hurt from time to time. We all do, but we can find hurt in the storm. I mean, joy in the storm. He can give you peace and joy even in your midst worst of times. He can do it. He loves you. He will carry you through your pain because the Bible says he healeth the broken and hard and bindeth up their wounds. He wants to heal you and give you joy. Amen. If you want to receive Christ today, all you got to do is know you're a sinner, believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, that there's only one God and it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's no other God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. John 14, verse 6, he's the only way. And all you got to do is repent of your sins and ask Jesus to come in your heart. That means I don't want to live in sin. It's in your heart. I want to live for Jesus. I'm going to pray a prayer. If you repeat this prayer, the Bible says, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Do you believe he died and rose from the grave? Amen. Ready to accept him in your heart and give him your life? You will be born again. You will be transformed by his power. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I receive you as my Lord. I am born again because you say so. I give you my life. I receive you in my heart. Wash me in your blood. I will follow you. I accept you. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I don't care what religion you are, I don't care where you come from, I don't care where you've been. You have eternal life, period. Because the Bible says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved, and nobody can take it away from you. God bless you. God bless you.